हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज योर इकोनॉमिक्स कोच प्रतीक भसीन ब्रिंगिंग यू पार्ट फोर ऑफ दी चैप्टर मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्जन फ्रॉम योर बुक स्टैटिस्टिक्स फॉर क्लास इलेवेंथ टुडे इज द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इन दिस पार्ट वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट लॉरेंस कर् ना वॉट इज लॉरेंस कर् लॉरेंस कर् वॉज डिस्कवर्ड बाय डॉक्टर मैक्स ओ लॉरेंस ही यूज दिस कॉन्सेप्ट to study the inequalities in income and wealth of a society but nowadays lorentz curve is being used to measure inequalities of income profit wages etc now what are the merits of using lorentz curve as a measure of dispersion so the merits are first of all it is very easy to compare to or more series in lorentz curve it actually depicts graphically that how unequally distributed or equally distributed two series are the second merit is it is attractive while you calculate range quartile deviation standard deviation or mean deviation they are all arithmetical in nature but this is the only method which measures the dispersion in the form of graphs so it is basically more attractive than the previous methods the third merit is it gives an idea about the extent of dispersion at a glance so you can basically look at the series and gain an idea that which series is more dispersed now let's talk about the demerits so the first demerit is it doesn't provide any numerical value for dispersion and only represents it graphically so we don't have any values in this that is while drawing the graphs we don't obtain any values we only get an idea which series is more dispersed the second is it is very difficult to draw so it involves a number of calculations to draw the lorentz curve so i have these steps to draw the lorentz curve the first step is first of all we have to accumulate the values in the series let's suppose we have a discrete series so we'll have to accumulate the value of the variable and also the frequencies then we'll have to find out the percentages for each of the component on the basis of the total value then we'll have to plot them on a graph while plotting them on a graph first of all we'll have to draw a 45 degree line which is also known as equality line or line of equal distribution after drawing this line when we plot all the points of the series we join them with a free hand now i have some questions in place now let's practice how do we draw the lorentz curve so let's look at the first question this question deals about some children whose weight has been recorded in two hospitals so we have the weight of children as 10 20 30 and 40 and we also have their frequencies in hospital a and hospital b so i have this table in place made for you so first of all we'll calculate the cumulatives of the variable so the variable in this question is weight of children so i have the weight as 10 20 30 and 40 so let's cumulate them so it is 10 30 60 and 100 so this is the cumulative of the weights that is the cumulative of all the variables now let us find out the percentage of the cumulative values so to calculate the percentage of cumulative values we have the formula which is value which is 10 upon total which is 100 because the last cumulative is 100 so the total will always be 100 into 100 where we multiplying it by 100 it is because we want to calculate the percentages so this will be 10% similarly the next one would be 30 upon 100 into 100 this will give me a value of 30% similarly the next value would be 60 divided by 100 into 100 which will be 60% and the final value would be 100 upon 100 into 100 this will give me an answer of 100% so i've obtained the variables cumulative values and the percentage of the cumulative values so now let's move on and calculate the cumulative of the frequencies so we have the number of children in hospital a as 10 25 5 and 10 so let's cumulate the values so we'll get 10 then we'll get 35 then 40 and finally the value will be 50 so the total would be 
Now let's calculate the percentages of these values. So it will be the value upon total value into 100. This would give me an answer of 20 percent. Now the next value would be 35 upon 50 into 100. This would give me a value of 70 percent. Now it will be 40 upon 50 into 100. This will give me a value of 80 percent. And then we have 50 upon 50 into 100. This will give me a value of 100 percent. Now let us calculate the same values for number of children in hospital B. So let us cumulate the values first. So we have 30, then we have 30 plus 50 which will be 80, 80 plus 20 which will be 100 and 100 plus 100 will give me 200. So the total of all the frequencies of number of children in hospital B would be 200. Now let us calculate the percentages. So we have 30 upon 200 into 100 this will give me an answer of 15 percent. The next will be 80 upon 200 into 100. This will give me an answer of 40 percent. The next is 100 upon 200 into 100. This will give me an answer of 50 percent. The next will be 200 upon 200 into 100. This will give me an answer of 100 percent. So I have obtained all the values. So for drawing a Lorentz curve, we need all these values. So that is why this is a demerit because it involves a lot of calculation while drawing a Lorentz curve. So we have all these values now, it's time to plot them on a graph. Always remember that whenever we are drawing the Lorentz curve, the variable is always plotted on the y axis. So we have the variable as weight of the children. So I will mark the y axis as percentage of weight of children. So I will mark these values on the y axis. So I have the values as 10, 30, 60 and 100. So I will take a gap of 20 percent. So this will be 20 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent and finally we have 100 percent. Let me first draw the line of equal distribution which is a 45 degree line drawn taking origin as the base. So let me draw it for you first. So this is the 45 degree line which I am going to draw for you. So we have the 45 degree line on place. Now we have to mark the frequencies on the x axis. So I will write percentage of hospital A or B and I will write the number of children. So let us mark this as 100 percent. I am taking a gap of 20 percent again. This will be 80 percent, this will be 60 percent, this will be 40 percent and finally this will be 20 percent. Now let us mark these points. So we have the first as 10 percent value and 20 percent value. So 10 comma 20. So it will be marked somewhat here. Now I have the value as 30 and 70. So we have 30 on the y axis and 70 on the x axis. So 70 lies here and 30 will lie somewhat here. So I will mark this line here. Now we have 80 and 60. So I will mark 80 on the x axis and 60 on the y axis. And finally I have a value 100 comma 100 which will lie somewhat here. Now let us mark the origin and join these curves. So we will obtain, I am drawing it freehand and joining all the points. So this is the line for hospital A. Now, let us draw this for hospital B. So we have 10 and 15. So 10 on the y axis and 15 on the x axis. So 10 comma 15 will lie somewhat here. Now we have 30 comma 40. 
So, 40 on the x axis and 30 on the y axis will lie somewhat here. Now, we have 60 and 50. So, 50 on the x axis and 60 on the y axis. Then we have 100 and 100 again. So, let us join these points and obtain the Lorentz curve. Now, we find that the line with the red color shading represents hospital B. The line with purple color shading represents hospital A. Now, let us see which series is more dispersed. So, we find that from the line of equal distribution, if we measure the differences for a series, we find that the data of hospital A is more dispersed as compared to hospital B because it is farther from the line of equal distribution. So, this is the conclusion that we make in this question that the data of hospital A is more dispersed as compared to the data of hospital B. So, we will write a conclusion that hospital A's data is more dispersed. So, this is how we obtain a Lorentz curve and this is how we analyze the conclusions from this. So, let us move on to our next question which is about a continuous series. So, we have this question in place which uh, tells us about two factories giving some daily income or daily wages to their workers. So, we will have to find out which factory's data is more dispersed. So, we have the daily income. First of all, we will find the mid values of the series. So, we have 20, 0 to 40, the mid value will be L1 plus L2 divided by 2. That is the lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2. Now, 60, then we have 100, then we have 140 and finally, we have 180. Let us total them. So, their total will be 500. So, total would be 500. Now, let us move ahead and calculate the cumulative of the mid values. So, we have 20, 80, 180, 320 and finally, 500. Now, let us also calculate the percentage of the cumulative of mid values. So, we have the value that is 20 upon total into 100. So, this will be 4 percent. Next, 80 upon 500 into 100. This will be 16 percent. The next is 180 upon 500 into 100 this will be 36 percent. Next is 320 upon 500 into 100, this will be 64 percent. And finally, we have 500 upon 500 into 100, this will be 100 percent. Now, we have factory A. So, let us first calculate the cumulative values of factory A. So, we have 32 plus 28 which is 60, plus 20 which is 80, plus 12 which is 92, plus 8 which is 100. So, now let us calculate the value of percentages of the cumulative of factory A. So, we have 32 that is the value upon total which is 100 into 100 because we are calculating percentages. So, this will be 32 percent. Next, 60 upon 100 into 100, this will be 60 percent. Next, 80 upon 100 into 100, which will be 80 percent. 92 upon 100 into 100, this will be 92 percent. And finally, it will be 100 upon 100 into 100, this will give me an answer of 100 percent. Now, let us also calculate the cumulative values for factory B. So, we have 30, 12, 4, 2 and 2. So, let us cumulate them 30, 42, 46, 48 and 50. 
Now let us also calculate the percentage of these cumulative values. The formula for that is value upon total value into 100. So we have 30 upon 50 into 100. So this will be 60 percent. Now the next value is 42 upon 50 into 100. This will be 84 percent. The next value is 46 upon 50 into 100. This is 92 percent. Then 48 upon 50 into 100. This will be 96 percent. Finally, it will be 50 upon 50 into 100. This will be 100 percent. So, I have obtained all the values. Let us plot this on a graph. So, let us draw the Lorentz curve. So, I have this axis on place. Let us mark the percentage of the mid values and the percentage of frequencies on y and x axis respectively. So, I have told you that we will always mark the variable on the y axis. So, we have the mid values here. So, I will write percentage of mid values on the y axis. So, we have this y axis origin and the x axis. So, let me draw the line of equal distribution for you. So, we have this 45 degree line in place which I have drawn. So, let me mark the percentages of mid value. We have 4, 16, 36, 64 and 100. So, I will take a gap of 20 percent again. So, we have 20, we have 40, 60 percent, 80 percent and 100 percent. So, while drawing on a graph, you will have more accuracy when you will draw it yourself. On the x axis, we will mark percentage of workers that is factory A or factory B. So, I will take the gap as 20 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent and finally, we have 100 percent. Now, let us mark the values. So, we have 4 percent and 32 percent. So, we have to mark 32 comma 4. So, 32 would lie somewhat here and 4 would lie here. So, we have this point as 32 comma 4. Then we have 60 comma 16. So, 60 comma 16. Now, we have 80 comma 36. So, 80 comma 36 and then we have 92 comma 64. So, 92 comma 64. So, this is where we mark it and then we have 100 comma 100. So, this is 100, this is also 100. So, the last point would always be 100 comma 100. So, I have marked it here. Now, let us join all these points freehand. Now, this is the data for factory A. So, I am marking it here as factory A. Now, let us do the same exercise for factory B. So, we have the data as 60 comma 4. So, 60 comma 4. Now, we have 84 comma 16. So, 84 comma 16. Then we have 92 comma 36. So, 92 comma 36. It will be here. Then we have 96 comma 64. So, 96 comma 64. So, it will be here and then we have 100 comma 100. Let us join all these points. So, if I compare these two lines with factory A and factory B in place and with the line of equal distribution. So, let me write line of equal distribution. I find that the data of factory B is more dispersed because it is farther from the line of equal distribution. So, I will write here that data of factory B 
is more dispersed. So, Lorentz curves helps us to determine which data is more dispersed and this method is a graphical method. So, you can actually ascertain which data is more dispersed by looking at it, merely looking at it, no calculations required. So, uh, there is a merit to this that uh, a lot of calculations are required while drawing it, but you can easily determine which data is more dispersed by looking at it. So, I hope you were able to cope up with this chapter. I will see you in the next class. Till then, bye and take care.